Well, hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining our panel discussion, Lessons Learned in Apple Adoption in Healthcare. My name is Adam Mahmood, and I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager of Healthcare. And I'm Brian Moreno. I am the Solutions Partner Manager focused on healthcare. Our entire team's mission is to help healthcare organizations secure and manage Apple experiences. And we've had the pleasure of working with some of the top hospitals around the world who are innovating with iOS, iPadOS, tvOS, and Mac solutions. You know, we're so excited to host this third annual healthcare panel discussion this year at JNUC. And we've invited some of those who are on the front line of supporting this new front line back to the JNUC stage. As Adam said, we are so excited. So let's take a quick look at what the agenda is going to be today. Get you introduced to everyone on this fabulous panel. We'll walk through some of our priorities and projects so you can learn how to support the expansion and modernization, provide some outcomes and takeaways, learning from others on how to take this Apple device, a consumer technology, and increase the adoption and enhance the workflow. And what's next? Looking at some of their key initiatives of what's going to come in the future, maybe get you some ideas over there. But Adam, let's hand it back to you for a moment. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. So without any further ado, Erin and Keith, please uh, say hello. Hi, I'm Erin Maroka. I'm in Los Angeles with UCLA Health's Unified Communication Team. Uh, my clinical background is a physical therapist, and I'm the JAMF admin for clinical iPhones and bedside iPads. Thanks for having me. And I'm Keith Cox. I'm the program manager for MyChart Bedside and our bedside iPad program at UCLA Health. And I started 11 years ago as an EMT, and most of my experience is in hospital operations before I moved over to IT. I'm glad to be here. Hi, everyone. Gwen Martinez, Clinical Informatics RN. Uh, my clinical background is in cardiac ICU, and I've been with UC Health for 25 years. Hey, I'm Ed Horowitz. I'm in Clinical Informatics at UC Health as well, as well as an enterprise architect at UC Health. And I have over 30 years working in healthcare in the community at Johns Hopkins and about almost eight years at University of Colorado Health. Hi, I'm Britt Partridge. I'm in San Diego with UC San Diego Health. Um, I got my start in fire and EMS. Most of my background has, in been, has been in clinical informatics at Ascension, and I currently serve as the virtual care technical lead at UC San Diego. Hello, I'm Walter Dobbins. I am a senior client systems administrator here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. I have actually I'm going on my 15th year here um, later this November. Um, prior to working at Cincinnati Children's, I was a former Apple employee, um, but I'm happy now that I can still continue to work on Apple products, managing them, um, but be in healthcare, which I have a huge passion for, so I can marry the two together. Thanks. Well, it's so great to see such a renowned group of people and institutions joining us today. So let's just jump in. We'd love to get a peek into what's new in each of your institutions and specifically any new Apple initiatives that are happening over the year. So let's start off with Erin over at UCLA. Can you tell us what's going on? Of course, uh, we've had a lot going on this year. Uh, for some background, a couple years ago, we moved our clinical comms from Androids and another MDM to iPhones and Jamf. And this transition was all positive, luckily. So last year when we were approached about moving the bedside iPads from another team and another MDM to my team in JAMP, I was really excited and supportive of the decision. Uh, then when we outlined the priorities of the bedside project, project coming from iPhones, uh, the workflow, there were two key new requirements for me. Uh, this was incorporating the Zoom Pro accounts, and the other one is ensuring seamless device wiping and re-enrolling workflows in production. Uh, thankfully, Jamf has healthcare listener and virtual visits, so that was great. Um, and interestingly, not only were we able to meet the requirements, virtual visits has really added value because instead of the patient or nurse having to manually write down each Zoom ID, with virtual visits, uh, they have the abil ability to easily text and email virtual visit invite links to loved ones. So that's an exciting improvement. That's amazing, thanks. Anything else? Keith, how about from you? 
Yeah, I'm excited to uh, share a little bit about our platform migration and some of the great experiences that we've had. So bedside, the bedside iPad program started as a, a small pilot on one unit and then expanded. So as we kind of built on to our uh, MDM that we were using before Jamf, things kind of grew without a, a clean organization. So one of the one of the major benefits we've seen of migrating platforms um, has just been having to make all the decisions to put the devices into Jamf, as well as organize and clean up where we have our devices, how we have them managed, what images we have on them, and how we came to the decisions that um, we've made for each of the settings. So that's been a major benefit for us in, in getting this project going. That's wonderful. Um, knowing that you have a clean slate, you're able to make it what works best for IT, clinicians, everyone involved. Thank you for sharing both of you. It's, it's really one of those things. We'll continue to watch the journey and look forward to see what happens in the future. And now let's hand it over to Walter in Cincinnati. What's been happening out your way? Thanks, Brian. Um, we've been busy. Um, our Mac environment, obviously continues to grow. We've been a Jamf customer for over a decade now, but we were really focused this past year over um, time over for our patient experience. And so um, we've had iPhones in our environment for a long period of time. We have iPads also, but our mobile devices went and grew over the past couple of years. Uh, we used to have about a thousand devices, mobile devices. Now we're at over 7,200 mobile devices. But when I say mobile, I mean tvOS devices, iPads, and iPhones. But as we talk about that patient experience, we really focused a lot on um, putting an iPad and Apple TV in every patient room. The Apple TV and iPad talks to each other, and the, the Apple TV is controlled by the iPad in the room. We wanted to really hone on making sure that part of that experience of the care was making the patients and families feel like that, that they were at home. And so we embarked on making the Apple TV a bring your own content type of device where patients and families can sign into Disney Plus, they can sign into HBO Max or YouTube or whatever their desire was to make their care feel like that they were at home, being at a place that they really didn't want to be at. What you see in this picture right here is actually our brand new building, critical care tower that we built last year, um, which houses all of our critical care patients. So complex airway, NICU, the bone marrow transplant divisions, those are part of this new building that we just recently built. And it took a whole huge effort to get all those critical care patients over to this building uh, seamlessly, and we did. But the most important thing is that the Apple TV and iPad is a consumer product, but it was a challenge sometimes to get this device to function in an enterprise. And so Jamf coupled with the healthcare listener was ideal for us. But before, as we went from Jamf Pro and healthcare listener, we also included the Java and Java was a workflow automation system that allows um, automations to happen on our Apple TVs and our iPads um, to make sure that that patient experience was 24 seven for our um, patients, families and staff. That timeline really took us about um, over about a two year time frame. What's shocking though, is that while we were building this critical care building, we were still deploying my chart bed side at our North campus and across other campuses of, of, of a hospital. So we were kind of doing two projects all at once. Not an easy lift, my goodness. And thank you for that. I think there's probably going to be a lot of people interested to, to knock on your door or send you an email. Again, Walter, I appreciate you sharing that and telling us how you've transformed the environment. We'll continue to watch on your story. And now bringing back Britt to the stage, it's been seven years that we've been watching this journey of how you've completely transformed patient experience and care with Apple platform. What's happening there now? Thanks, Brian. Um, as you mentioned, we have been partners with Jamp for a long time, and we've had pretty robust infrastructure throughout all of our different 
care areas. We have iPhones, iPads, Apple TVs. Um, so this year was more about looking into niche workflows and how could we optimize on that infrastructure that we already had pervasive throughout the system. Um, as with everyone else, telemedicine blew up during the pandemic. So we were lucky to have pretty much everyone know how to use it. And we wanted to look at ways that we could make even more of an impact or affect those very specific use cases that we might need to expand upon. So for us this year, that kind of came to fruition in two different projects, one in ambulatory and one in inpatient. Um, on, the inpatient or on the ambulatory side, we moved from deep integration inside of Epic to context-aware linking, which means you use WebRTC to have your video visit in a browser instead of inside of your Epic application. This was a big deal for us because we use shared clinical iPads in our um, clinics, so we had to work closely with Jamf to make sure that all of the correct settings and configurations would allow for those visits to happen even while the providers were sharing the iPads. We also use the iPads um, on the patient side in our student health environment to do video visits. So if a student doesn't have a um, latest smartphone or the ability to have the video visit, they can come into the clinic and have a psych visit on the iPad. So we had to make sure those settings were there the same as well. Um, and then another one that I was really excited about is on our inpatient world, we're calling it tele-internal. Um, we already have the Zoom um, Meet Now Jamf Power video visits with all of our bedside iPads, but there's a specific patient population that can't interact with the iPads. They might not be alert or oriented. They might not be fully with it because of medications they're on or neurological conditions. We wanted to make sure that their clinical teams could also check in on them. So we started with a pilot um, on two of our units to use single app mode with Zoom rooms so that the providers could zoom in on the patient and it would auto answer and they could check in without the patient having to do anything. Um, we learned a lot from that first round of the pilot and we're about to go into the second round. Super exciting. Thanks, Brent. I appreciate the input. And I definitely could see a lot more resources and organizations looking at Zoom Room as an opportunity as well. All right. Well, Gwen and Ed from UC Health, it was so great to see your iPhone for mass vaccination story featured in Apple's recent health report. Since then, what else has been happening in Colorado? Yeah, there's been a lot going on in UC Health. Um, I'm going to bring more of a clinical perspective to you all today. Now that the COVID crisis has abated, um, we are back on track with our future planning and goals. But to address some of the fallout from COVID, which isn't unique for healthcare, I think we all are experiencing short staffed and seeing a lot of cognitive burnout and stress um, it, within our workforce. Um, in fact, our CNO has recently said this time we cannot hire our way out of staffing, um, a staffing shortage, and we must work smarter leveraging our, you know, technology. Um, our CNO, our CIO, sorry, sees mobility as the future since mobile devices have other functionalities such as the camera, um, being able to use it as a barcode scanner. Um, and much more that has not yet been tapped with our mobile devices. So that is a distinct um, future strategy at UC Health. Um, as a result, uh, we are looking for ways to ease cognitive burnout, decrease stress. And some of this is the little things um, in terms of a clinician trying to get technology to work at the bedside, making ease of use um, much more accessible, having more devices available to leverage the technology. Um, Ed is also going to speak about some of our future initiatives that are really exciting where nursing doesn't have to hand write things so much in the future. Um, we're taking some of that data and presenting it all without nursing having to handle it. Um, UC Health has set up a formal structure to work at to look at this uh, strategy with mobility. So I think that has been a big change for us in that we have more of a formal structure and a formal team carved out for this future for us. And then lastly, I went to the first nursing conference at Apple and I kind of heard the same theme about cognitive stress, burnout, and being short staffed. So I think we're all taking that 
that sense and taking that data and uh, trying to figure out how can we work smarter. Ed? Yeah, thanks, Gwen. Um, yeah, just to reiterate, it's kind of great going to the last this group because we get to hear um, what everybody else is doing. And, you know, we've overlapped in some of the ways in including some of the video visits, uh, embedded, for example, things like that, like some of the other folks. So it's great. One of the keys for us at UC Health is we continue to grow as an institution and like many expanding exponentially, it really is growing our mobile footprint, like Gwen mentioned, um, specifically an Apple footprint. So currently we have over 4,000 Apple devices, including iPads, Apple TVs, iPhones deployed, and we continue to grow. We right now, um, and you kind of see in that picture, we have a third tower we're actually uh, building that's going to open in the spring. It's our uh, third patient tower at our main uh, campus, which is our main teaching hospital. And we're going to be adding over at uh, over 2,000 iPhones, equal amount of iPads as well, as well as Apple TVs in every room where we have them communicate and help with the patient experience, you know, knowing that all of how much all of that plays a role in the patient's healthcare when they can be involved. And so a little bit later, I think we'll talk about some of the specifics that we're working on with things like digital whiteboards and the interactions with Apple TVs and our TVs and kind of making that more central to what's go what is in our rooms and what's going on for our patients. Thanks. Wow. Thank you. This is great. And, you know, I think each of you are continuously resonating the messaging that Adam and myself and the healthcare team at Jamf are constantly hearing and, and reading in the news of it is a struggle for clinicians who have been at the front line day in, day out through all of these challenges and learning to adapt and making sure technology is helping them and not hindering the workflow. And through each of your experiences, your initiatives and today's session, I hope that we're able to bring light to what others are doing so we can help continue this journey and find the ways we can all be successful. So again, each of you, thank you. Um, handing it back to you, Adam. Awesome, thank you so much, Brian and uh, the panelists. Unpacking what you shared uh, and the projects and priorities over the last year you've been working on a bit more, we'd love to really hear from you some of the top challenges as Brian just alluded to, um, really, unpack what the drivers and outcomes you're hoping to achieve are with these projects, and then ultimately distill some advice that you'd like to share for other institutions. Uh, so to hop into our first section around challenges, uh, what were the biggest challenges you faced during the project you shared and why? Uh, so Brent, you mind if we start with you at, at UCSD? Sure. So I would say the biggest challenges, particularly for the tele-internal, was a little bit surprising to me. Normally I'm used to, you know, running into bugs or config errors, but this round, um, it was actually the physical space and the hardware that moved within that space that was the biggest challenge. Um, we started off with a talon that attached to a bed, and we, even though we talked about current state, we didn't really plan for how often the beds would move, how much the patients wouldn't want the talents that close to them, um, how hard it would be to reattach them, things like that. And so on our next pilot, we'll be moving to some different hardware, but um, that was a big challenge for us that I hadn't really faced before. And I definitely recommend, I mean, even you can test as much as you want, but just be ready to kind of work throughout that physical space and, and work with some different options. Um, Aaron and or Keith, uh, any thoughts from UCLA? Yeah, I can add something. Uh, moving uh, the bedside iPads from one MDM to another has been a huge project. So there've been a lot of challenges. Uh, I think maybe one of the main challenges and the most rewarding things has been the unpacking and reorganizing of current state before moving it to Jamf. It's like this great opportunity to build it right the first time. And we really want to make sure there is a seamless transition and well thought out build into Jamf. Um, but one of the key things is that I'm not the MDM of the other, uh, sorry, I'm not the admin of the other MDM. So basically Keith was the middleman providing all this information to help with the build. Uh, so poor Keith, and uh, maybe he can add more specific details to some of the challenges that we've had during this project. Yeah, just to add to that, I think we, it, it was hard to estimate from the beginning, we had no kind of idea 
uh, how much work would actually go into piling all the information that we needed um, to get set up. And so plenty of, like I mentioned before, plenty of this stuff had been built years ago and had been added uh, to different iterations. So just the sheer volume of decisions that needed to be made at the level of detail and specificity that needed to be um, configured in Jamf was a, was a big lift um, for a lot of our team, but definitely worth the effort now that we have this all completely cleaned up and organized and um, a big team of people who've kind of thoughtfully arrived at this whiz of data that we have from having been live with this. So that's been great. Awesome. Anyone else on, on the panel um, thoughts about challenges that, that you've experienced? You know what, Adam, earlier you said a key word, you said um, transformation. And I think all of us um, experience trans transformation because Apple devices are really consumer devices, no matter if it's an iPhone, iPad, or even an Apple TV. Now, Apple has made major, major strides over the years to welcome, be welcome, more welcome in the enterprise or even in healthcare. But even for us, the Apple TV, for example, um, we wanted it in every room. Um, it made sense. These are devices that our patients and our families have at home. So it makes them feel more comfortable and the usability may make sense. But then we deployed the Apple TVs and um, we wanted to make sure that the Apple TVs never go to sleep because then we can manage them and then they're always readily available for our patients and our families. We deploy them. And with any technology deck, no matter how perfect you want it to be, we did, we saw that all of our Apple TVs were going to sleep after 15 minutes because that's the default that Apple provides. And so we deployed even a payload that Jam provided to never uh, allow the Apple TV to go to sleep. Well, the Apple TV still went to sleep. And so these were this this was a major challenge for us. But then we were we learned more and more even about and I mentioned earlier the Java, the automation. And so with that, coupled with the Apple TV device partner, Apple, Jamf Pro from Jamf, and then Java even from Jamf as well, all those three together allowed us to have our Apple TVs be built in a certain manner that they never go to sleep. Even with healthcare listener, they'll wipe, but then they'll come back up, they'll be already provisioned, they are already ready for the room assignment and they're ready for our patients and our families. And so it was a major, major challenge, but the benefits that we're experiencing right now for our patients and our family, families is priceless. I love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing these, um, these challenge points. And, it, you know, calling back to what um, Aaron and, and Keith spoke about, you know, rebuilding the house, so to speak, in effort of standing up these experiences. Um, it's worth the effort. And I think that's kind of what you speak to as well, Walter, is like you've had the foundation up, but you had to look for those extra um, solutions and integrations that filled in the gaps that made sure that those touch points, or in the case of an Apple TV, the lack thereof of a touch point, like don't, don't force somebody to touch the Apple TV for it to get updated, right? Um, those things matter, right? And Apple technology is amazing consumer, simple tech, but here in these healthcare applications, there is some extra work we need and challenges that we work through to, to get there. So um, when we think about the goal of mobile technology or any technology, hopefully there are some key underlying goals you've set out early in strategic planning. I'll start with you, Keith. Are, are there specific um, desired outcomes for users or goals that were driving your mobile deployment? And um, we'll move beyond that to Gwen. Perhaps you could share some context from UCL. Yeah, so for UCLA, really the driver for us to move to Jamf was uh, the focus on our user experience. So um, with our bedside iPad program, we want to make it as seamless as possible for our staff to set up the devices since our, our clinical staff are so busy um, asking them to add additional steps to their workflow is a big deal. And one of the things that Jamf offered us um, that our previous MDM did not was the ability to prioritize app downloads. And so what we wanna make sure is that the apps that our clinical team uses for patient care are able to download first so they can get started when they're in a pinch. 
um, as well as have the, have the list of prioritized apps come down in that order as quickly as possible for the patients as well. So we want to, it, the Jamf tools really helped us, um, improve the speed at which this operates to focus on the patient experience and the user experience. Experiences, uh, matter and those being the drivers and working backwards is, uh, uh, in my opinion, I'm biased, but the best way to, to set goals and objectives. So love that. Gwen, um, tell us more about things at, at UC Health. What, what are some of perhaps the ROI or findings you're seeing from mobility? Yeah, we're following some key metrics. Um, number one, nursing barcode administration rates, meaning that our nurses scanning the patient and medications. And the reason why we think that's important is patient safety. Patient safety and decreasing any med uh, medical errors is really important. Um, the other thing is time to documentation is really important. Um, we're measuring that from the mobility versus using a WOW and a work clinical workstation. So we think that the mobile the mobile device will have um, ease of use and quicker time to documentation instead of nursing saving all of their documentation till the end of shift and sitting down and banging it out at the end of shift where you might figure, forget some details that happen during the day, especially if nurses are carrying uh, six or seven patients in their load. Um, other things that we're looking at is the secure messaging, how much people are using uh, texting in terms of IM, IMing and making sure that they're using uh, secure messaging between healthcare teams. And what we think with this is decreased time to treatment um, for the patients. So if you're able to get a hold of someone via messaging much easier than sending a page out, um, waiting for that page to come back or being transferred around until you hit the right person, being put on hold when you're using a telephone system, uh, we think that will decrease the time to treatment for the patient. So I think patient safety and decreased time to treatment are really important factors with our adoption and using the mobile platform. Thank you so much for sharing what the North Star looks like there, Gwen. And really cool to see how kind of advanced you are um, tracking these metrics. You know, moving into the, the next section, you know, what is your top piece of advice for an organization just starting out on their healthcare mobility journey? Um, Ed, how about I tee it over to you over back at UC Health? Thanks, Adam. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been thinking about and talking about this a lot. And I, I one of the big things is don't expect that one size or one situation fits all, meaning take a look at the big picture. In, in this case, you know, we're talking about hospitals, healthcare facilities, and each unit in a hospital, for example, has different needs, right? It's not all the same everywhere. And our tendency, I'm speaking for myself, you know, and I think our group, it's like, okay, we're gonna put this in a hospital and we're gonna do X, Y, Z with this stuff. But you, you need to process, and what we've learned, you need to process and build where you're gonna follow, you know, and, and that takes partnerships with who you're working with. Um, you know, it's very situational. Uh, you need to learn new ways to use devices and adopt them to individual needs across the system. So in our case, for example, ICUs are very different from a med surge unit or from a cardiac care unit, right? So you can't build out something that's that's going to work in one unit as it is in another. And Jamf is really great at that. It's It's been a great partner because you can kind of compartmentalize your different groupings while having the same overall look, but then design it to kind of address the needs of all these different units. Um, you know, the other thing is to, and, and people have alluded to this some as well, but you need to be prepared for, it's not gonna work like the way you envisioned it. And one of the big things, and, and Walter had a, a great example with his, you know, the Apple TVs, we were a little bit the opposite. We were all excited. We put in the Apple TVs, it was great. And then afterwards, we learned that healthcare listener is not going to work on a device that's not hardwired. So we were stuck. We thought we were stuck with like these Apple TVs and it's like, oh man, what are we going to do? Because we can't reset them. Obviously in a hospital and like most places, PHI, PAI, that personal health health information is really important. Right? We can't 
leave stuff up there, whether someone's logged into their Netflix or their healthcare information's up there, something like that. So we kind of learned some different ways that until in our newer builds, we can have them wired in to work with them. So you can still swipe up to them, share content, right? But they're not going to be wiped each time because that content, whether it's just on an iPad, for example, whether it's something from bedside or something like that. So, you know, our new builds now we've learned they're going to be hardwired for Apple TVs, um, have network connection. Um, and it's going to be the easiest way to have them healthcare listener work, have them re-enrolled so we can kind of get to where Cincinnati is and learn from Walter's team with, with that. And so I, I think that's the big thing is like, don't, don't get, don't lock yourself in something and take a look at that big picture and how you can apply it differently to different groups within where you're working. I think that applies to business education as well, you know, healthcare, obviously, but it's really across the board. I love it. Sound advice. Thank you so much for sharing. Sure. Walter, how about from you? Um, thoughts from Cincinnati? If I was to give some advice, um, I probably would start with just accepting that your organization can't do it all. You can have some great ideas. You can have a great vision, but you need partners, but not any partner. You need the right partners in order so your vision can be clear and that your experience, whether it's in healthcare, in the school or an enterprise is exactly what you want your vision to be. The next thing I will probably think about to provide advice for is to play, to plan, not just for the now, but scale out and have your vision built to what your workflows will look like within the next five or 10 years, that your infrastructure can be ready for your growth. And so that's what we learned here at Cincinnati Children's year over year, is that when we plan things out, we are really big on uh, making sure that our infrastructure is set for years to come as we continue to grow and expand. As we open up to the group, anyone else, feel free to to jump in. Um, Thoughts on advice you might offer up for someone listening today? Yeah, I would just add, um, as Ed alluded to, you know, a lot of times what you plan and what you map out in your current state workflow and your future state workflow can be wonderful, but it doesn't always implement the same way or work the same way in a high-paced clinical environment. Um, So I would say just be really comfortable with iterating and changing. It doesn't mean that you failed. It just means that you're making it better for your end users um, in cycles. And I've always heard the quote, don't be locked into a solution, fall in love with a problem. And I feel like particularly in this tele-internal project, um, we're going to get there and we're going to solve it, but it's going to take some iterations so that we can fully support our clinicians um, using it in the way that best fits with their workflow. It's so important that that ability to iterate and change. And I love that, like fall in love with the problem, don't get locked into a solution. And ultimately, we didn't really call it out here, but... You know, the few prior years of panel discussions at, at JNUC were almost focused on how organizations can do just that. And you all have been part of those conversations. That's why we have IT and clinical and informatics all represented here. Because if you have that right um, internal dialogue, then I think you can information share quickly and then hopefully pivot and change in those moments. Or to your point, kind of adapt things in a fragmented way to fit the right uh, subsections of your environment. So. So cool. Thank you all so much. Um, With that, I'm going to tee it back up for Brian to close us out with the next chapter. Yeah, oh my gosh. So much great information there. And it gives me semi good and bad flashbacks to when I was working in healthcare as an IT leader for so many years and then traveling the US, deploying devices, how great technology can be and how many times we have to rip off the Band-Aid and put a new Band-Aid on and and try to fix things a little differently. So I love all the innovation and the way that each of you have iterated. Um, Manually touching devices was not fun. That was my job for a while. And, you know, there's so many ways that the right tools at the right time, just like Walter said, make sure it is the right team together, um, that you can do things differently. But let's take just a couple minutes before we wrap today and talk about what's next for each of you. Um, would love to start with UC Health, Ed and Gwen. 
thoughts for what's to come in the future with your organization? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Um, so three specific things for us um, from, from my end in terms of patient experience were um, working on a digital whiteboard solution, which we hope to move uh, eventually to the Apple TVs. Um, we do have an area where those are hardwired in, by the way. So, but we're that's that's going to be one of our main uh, focuses. The other uh, one, other big project we're working on is e-consents using our iPads and EDs and expanding those to clinics as well. And that's a, a newer initiative which has been it's really just starting, but I think it's a huge piece of what we're going to be doing. The last. Um, Kind of newer thing is is the use of iPads in for digital signage actually outside our rooms and basically using a PoE power over Ethernet connection. For those, we have them connected directly to a database coming from Epic, and it the whole idea is getting rid of all the sticky notes and other stuff that sticks on a patient's door and on the wall and all that, and having that as some direct signage. And we've tried I have to say we've tried different devices, and in the end, the iPads. Um, which then are part of our Jamf um, catalog now work amazingly well. And so that's those are three big kind of takeaways and things we're working on over the next few months. Yeah, the other things that we're working on, we're doing a 4,000 device expansion um, at the main hospital, the teaching hospital in Aurora. So we're going to introduce 4,000 new mobile devices with that new tower. And I think part of it too, just like Keith um, and Aaron is cleaning up our JAMP uh, imaging, you know, to working on that cleaning house and organizing, and then also making sure our desktop support can um, fully support these without e extra tech, you know, extra help from our teams, our development side. Thank you both, such great information. And I'm really looking forward to hearing more about the ED as so many organizations that we've worked with um, continue to build on how do we improve the ED and make sure that it is more modernized because they're so busy and technology is an opportunity yet a challenge. So congrats to you both. Um, Britt, how's it going over at UCESD in the next couple of years? What's, what's happening? Yeah. So um, first off, um, our wonderful ancillary apps team is working on more iPhone expansion. We do have iPhones pretty widely deployed. Um, however, as soon as a group sees another group having them, they ask for them. And so we constantly get requests and they're working on strategy to keep growing and growing that. Um, and then the other project that I'm really excited about and is a little bit newer to us is what we're calling ED to home. So what that will look like is patients that are maybe a little bit lower acuity can go home a couple days early with a kit from the hospital. Um, they'll check in with the ED providers from their house. They'll be monitored with peripherals that are inside of the kit. And then they'll also have home health nurses in their house um, to help with lab draws and things like that. So it's really just extending the ED to home where they can recuperate in a more familiar and comfortable situation. And how that relates to this discussion is that some of our patients perhaps don't have a newer or um, smartphone that would be needed to have these peripherals Bluetooth attached to it. And so we don't want to leave them behind. We definitely are about equity. And so we're going to be sending those patients home with a UCSD managed iPhone. And for us, that's a new thing to have a patient take a managed iPhone home with them or any managed device really. So I'm excited for that learning curve, but I'm sure we'll have lots of lessons learned next year. So congrats, that's gonna be really exciting. And um, Walter, Cincinnati, what, what's planned for the next couple of years? Yes, so here at Cincinnati Children's, we're looking to um, expand continuously on our clinical mobility platform. Uh, we're actually in the middle of our refresh of our what we like to call clinical smartphones right now. Um, but we really want to embark on uh, implementing single sign-on. And the reason for single sign-on for us is we have a lot of our clinical staff that um, they're getting a little uh, frustrated with having to sign into multiple applications. And so the single, single sign-on implementation will allow um, obviously, what Jamf provides, a uh, one-time logon, they can focus on the most important thing, which is caring for our 
uh, patients, especially when they're pediatric kids. Uh, we take deep uh, passion in that. Um, but furthermore, we continue to um, expand our patient experience. Um, our inpatient bedside Apple TV uh, experience went very, very well. And so our leadership was um, excited and thought, well, let's Im implement this in the ED. And from what we heard thus far, as, we, as we've gone to our partners, our Epic partners, no one has done MyChart BSI in the ED before. And so um, here at Cincinnati Children's, we are going to be tasked with um, implementing MyChart BSI in the ED using healthcare listener in some form. But then also on top of MyChart BSI being on, on, on the iPads, we'll have multiple different applications, which we like to call like positive distraction iPads, uh, whereas there may be some movies or some games just to take the mindset or the fear that uh, the kid may have while being in ED away. So we're pretty excited about these two initiatives that we're gonna um, focus on this fiscal year. Absolutely, and thank you for sharing. I know when I've been a patient recently, it is nice when I can just resume what I was watching or feel the comfort from the device that was provided to me, what's happening. And yes, less clicks for a clinician, more focus on patient care. I think everyone wins there. And last but certainly not least, Aaron and Keith over at UCLA, can you close us out with what's going on over there in the next couple of weeks and years and months? Thanks. As we um, continue rolling out JAMF, we're looking forward to uh, continuing to expand our inpatient telemedicine through some of the workflow improvements that we're getting from JAMF virtual visits. Um, we have some exciting stuff happening with Apple Health Kit integrations um, and some of our proof of concept projects in psychiatry and in medicine. And then uh, we are exploring smart TVs, smart home technology in the rooms, in our existing rooms, as well as uh, we're working on some new build projects where we can set this stuff up um, to be as wired as possible from the start. So those are a few of the exciting things. I can give an update on clinical comms. Uh, my team is working on replacing our uh, voice app solution right now. So that's a big project. I'll try to remember Britt's advice to fall in love with the problem during this, this project. Um, but for this new voice app will then be applied to all of our clinical iPhones. So the ones that are in production now will get it and then we'll be able to expand our deployment to more than double the number of phones out there to over 2000. So we'll be able to uh, have clinical iPhones for our, uh, our nurses and our ancillary groups. So um, that's something exciting that's coming up for us. That's really exciting because we all have heard about how much all clinicians, all, healthcare staff workers and support team members love to do secure text messaging. Um, it's easy, it's universally accepted, and it really does streamline care. So thank you again to all of you. We're gonna transition to some Q&A. And so Adam, I'm gonna hand it back to you. Thank you again, Brian and panelists. Again, I wish we had more time because uh, frankly, we could go an hour into each one of your journeys, probably multiple hours. No, just a few last comments. Um, please check out the other healthcare sessions at JNUC this year. There is no shortage of them. Um, I'll give a special call out to If This, Jamf That, a session featuring Walter from Cincinnati Children's and discussing Jamf and other integrations uh, focused on automation. Most importantly, thank you all so much for joining us today for this conversation. And thank you panelists for being here. Um, this would be nothing without you. We owe you uh, our greatest thanks in your partnership and look forward to the next steps in your environments with Apple technology. Thank you all, have a great rest of your day.